Hi guys, welcome to my channel Software Testing by MKT. As a part of this video, I'm going to explain you how we can do parallel testing and cross-browser testing in Selenium using TestNG. I'm going to explain this from scratch. Let me share my screen. So once you have downloaded your Eclipse, the first thing that you have to create is you need to create a Java project. Guys, you can also create the Maven project. What is the difference between the Java project and the Maven project? How to deal with the Java project? How to deal with the Maven project? I have explained a little bit about it in my previous video. In my upcoming video, I will be talking more about them in depth. So you don't have to worry, right? But as of now, I'm going to explain this in the Java project. You have to go to file. You need to go to create a Java project. You need to give the project name. Project name can be anything. I'm giving the project name as Selenium Test NG. You can select your GRE as any version. I'm selecting 1.8 and click on the finish button. Once project is created, now the next thing that you have to create is called as the package. Package name can be anything. I'm giving the package name as Test NG Test Cases. Once after your package is created, now you have to start creating a class, right? Now your class can be your test case one. Once you have created your test case one, now you cannot start writing the writing the program because as of now the test ng is not present so you have to first go and download the test ng so you have to go to the help and you need to go to eclipse marketplace in eclipse marketplace you have to search for the test ng it can take little or little bit time not more than 20 seconds right but it may take also as you can see it is taking little time but that's okay you can have little patience now you can see here search text field here you can go and type the test ng and press the search button and then you can see there is an install button available here kindly click on the install button so in my laptop this test ng is already installed so i have it is written as installed how to install the test ng using java project i have already uploaded a separate video on it go and check it out so now my test case one is ready class is ready right now i need to make sure that i go to build path configure build path in my configure build path so i need to do the right click on my project i need to go to add library in add library i need to add the test ng library so test ng library is now added but selenium jar is not present so i need to go to build path configure build path and i need to go to uh, add external jar after clicking on add external jar you need to select the selenium server 4.21.0 it can be anything you can download that from the Selenium official website. And now your test case one, you can go and start creating the annotation at the rate of, you can give any method name, let's say public void going to Amazon. Let's say this is my test case one. And you can import this at the rate of test. You can hover over at the rate of test, you will get the option, right? And uh, once this is done, you can make sure to create one more test case so you can go here and create one more test case you can give the name of the test case as test case 2 in the test case 2 also you have to do the same thing but here instead of writing here login to amazon you can write here some other scenario let's say searching on amazon so you have a total of two test cases now test case 1 and test case 2 so let's start working on the test case 1 right Remember, the ultimate goal of this topic is to do the parallel testing. Parallel testing means running your test cases parallelly on different, different browsers like Chrome, Mozilla, Edge, Internet Explorer, Safari, etc. Right. So now what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to open my browser and I'm going to visit the official website of Amazon. Once after visiting the official website of Amazon, my job is to log in, right? so i need to first launch this url how to launch this url first you need to launch the browser so chrome driver driver is equals to new chrome driver once after doing that you have to import once after importing it you need to do the next step as driver.get url so I hope you all know that this is the line which is used to launch the empty browser. After that, you can make use of driver.get. Get method is to launch the any URL. So you have written this URL you want to launch. After that, I want to maximize my browser. So I want to make use of driver.manage.window.maximize. This will help me to maximize my 
browser. Now I need to inspect this email text field. So email text field is made with ID also, name also, as you can see. So I'm making use of an ID here. So how to do? You need to first find the element, then you need to locate it, and then you need to perform an action, right? So let's find it first using element, And now let's locate it. By, by is one of the class in Selenium, by ID. And what is the ID? Whatever the ID that you have copied, you need to paste it. So this is the ID, AP underscore email, AP underscore email. You must know as a automation tester that the return type of the find element is a beautiful web element interface. So you need to write here web element, web element and give me reference variable, let's say UN. UN stand for username variable, right? Kindly import this. Once this is done, now you can perform an action using this UN dot what you want to perform, you want to type your email ID. So you can type your email ID using your send keys method. ST by MKT at the rate of gmail.com. This is my personal mail ID. So I have entered it here. Once after entering it, your next job is to start doing finding, locating and performing action on the continue button. So you inspect this also. You can see here also it is made with the ID equals to continue. So I'm going to make use of a continue again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to perform the same thing right and uh, i'm going to perform the same thing but this time my id is going to be continue so i'm going to replace id with continue right and uh, username will get replaced with username continue button right and as you know what action we will like to perform on the username continue button it's not send keys but it's dot click right let me just run it once just to check whether script is really running or not running so i have run it let's see if it is really running or not if it is running then we will even go to automate our test case too and so on so you can see it is able to do whatever i have done till here and after that our job is not yet done i have entered my username i have clicked on the continue button now i need to enter my password so first you need to inspect it for password you can see id is password so again what i will do i will make use of the same thing but here for password i will use the id as ap password so just replace id with ap password and this variable will become password equals to right and uh, now it is asking what action you want to perform on the password text field obviously i want to send keys you want to type your password right so you want to make use of the send keys so i have entered the send keys okay now after this you have to finally click on the sign in button so sign in button is made with id called as sign in button so again you have to do the same procedure but this time your id is going to be sign in button so your id is going to be replaced with sign in button and this will be replaced with sign in right now what action you want to perform on the sign in you want to perform dot congratulations my test case number one is automate okay now my test case one is login to amazon now let's go to test case two in test case two what i am doing i am doing searching on amazon searching a product on amazon is what i mean okay so what i will do my step will remain same launching the empty browser will remain same maximizing the browser will remain same right now let me make use of the get url what is the url of amazon india https colon www.amazon.india right and once after that, I want to search a product. To search a product, I need to go to the home page. To search a product here, I need to locate this search text field. So let me inspect it. While inspecting it, you can see it is also made with the ID text field. So you can make use of the same driver dot find element by ID. What is the ID? This is the beautiful ID. Now, what is the return type of the find element? You guys already know. I have said you multiple times the return type of the find element is it web element interface so this is your search text fill if you think you're not understanding something as of now don't worry just pause the video go to the comment section and list out your doubts i promise i will resolve your doubt if you want to reach out to me personally i'm giving you my whatsapp personal number in the comment section please check it out my personal whatsapp number i have also given in the video description kindly check it right you can mail me call me at any time i will be responding to you now this web element you can import it and once after this you can perform an action on uh, this search text field so what action you want to perform on the search text field with search text field you want to type your product so what is your product let's say i want to search for shoe take example right 
So my test case one is automated. My test case two is automated. On these two test cases, I want to do the parallel testing, right? See guys, generally what automation testers do, generally who don't have much knowledge, they execute the test case one separately and they execute the test case two separately. But this is not the main job of the test ng. As you know, test ng is a framework which allows you to run multiple test cases together, right? So obviously you can run the test case one separately. Obviously you can go and run the test case two separately, right? But I'm going to run both of them together now. Let me show you. So as you can see, my test case one is also working. My test case two is also working. In test case two, something is missing. After searching the product, I'm not pressing enter button. So I'm going to press the enter button using send keys. Using keys enum, using keys functionality, I'm going to make it happen. So as you know that most of the time, whenever we search any product, immediately after searching it, we press enter button. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm pressing enter button. Here I'm making use of a keys. Keys is one of the enum, E-N-U-M we have in TestNG or Selenium, right? Uh, keys is not the uh, enum of the TestNG. It is the enum of your Selenium using which you can perform any, any kind of uh, keyboard functionality like press pressing the enter button right so now your test case one is ready your test case two is ready now our job is to do the right click on it go to the test engine convert this to the test engine uh, if you want you can change the name here of your xml creation if you want you can do that i don't want so i'm going to click on the finish button now you have the test engine.xml ready so you can click on the test engine.xml now now you can see there is a suit name if you want you can change your suit name so i'm going to give the suit name as test cases and uh, as of now if i just run this from here you can see what will happen first my test case one will execute and then my test case two will execute if you're thinking this is parallel testing then the answer is no because as you can see my test case one is only executing test case two have not started yet test case two has started now right so first my test case one is executing then my test case two is executing this is not a parallel testing okay now we have to make this test case to do parallel testing in order to make it, it run parallelly I need to make use of one more annotation called as at the rate of parameters. Okay. So before I do that, what we changes we need to do in this program is we need to make sure that my test case one extends a different class. Let me write the class name as launch quit. Okay. Same thing I need to do for my test case two also. I need to write test case two extends launch and quit. Now, where is launch and quit class? There is, it's not present as of now. So you can create it. So you can create a new class called as launch. Once after creating the class called as launch and quit, right? Here you can create basically two methods with two annotations. One is called as before method. One is called as after method, right? I hope you know the different annotations that we have in the test engine. If you guys don't know, let me tell you the different annotations that we have in the test engine are before suit, before test, before class, before method. How we have for before, same way we have for after method, after test, after class, after suit. We don't have just only this nine annotations with at the rate of test. We just don't have this nine annotations in the test ng. We have more annotations in the test ng also, like at the rate of parameters, at the rate of data provider, at the rate of listeners, right? So in the in the test ng, we have basically two important annotations. One is called as one is called as before method and one is called as after method now both annotation will have a method something like public y launch and here also one method will come something like public y but you make sure you are importing both of the annotation one is before method and one is after method you need to make sure that you are importing both of them and now i have explained this in my previous videos in previous videos that every at the rate of test has its own before method and after method if you do not know you should know this today so what i'm trying to tell you you can see i have at the rate of test here in my test case one as you can see my test case two also have one at the rate of test now i just want to tell you that every test cases or every at the rate of test has its own before method and after method so how now the order of execution will be first before method will run then first at the rate of test will run then after method will run 
and then the same thing will repeat for the test case two. Let's say this is my test case one, and let's say this is my test case two. This is the order of execution with before method and after method. The same game I'm going to now utilize it. In order to utilize this now, what I'm going to do in my test case one, whatever I have written here, this is not needed anymore because this is now because this is now I'm going to paste it in the launch input, right? So that is not needed anymore in my test case one. In the test case two also, this is not needed. So I'm going to delete it, right? You need to make sure that at least this driver is, re is recognizable in the other test cases, right? This driver, right? Here is a local variable. So you need to make it as a global. So you need to make sure that you are making it as a global like this. Now this is your global variable, right? Once after making it as a global variable, writing here Chrome driver is not required, so you can delete it. Now you can see your test case one is also not giving you any trouble. Your test case two is also not giving you any kind of trouble. You can delete this import. It is not needed anymore. In this also, this is not needed. You can delete it. So I hope you know that when you do Chrome driver, driver is equals to new Chrome driver, right? It just launch your Chrome browser. Okay. But what if, if you want to launch any browser for that, we don't use Chrome driver. We use web driver. Okay. I have explained this in my other videos. If you have not checked it, please go and check it out. So you have to write Chrome, uh, you have to write web driver driver is equals to new Chrome driver to launch the Chrome browser. Okay. Now everything is fine, but now we have to make use of one more uh, annotations, which is called as at the rate of parameter. So you have to use one more uh, annotation called as at the rate of parameter. You have to give some name to this parameter, something like uh, the name as let's say browser. You have to give some name. So I have given the name as browser. You can write any name. Okay. Now your job is to import it. You have to import it from the test engine. Now this this browser the parameter which you have given right this what it will do it will take the value from your xml file right so for that reason what we have to do inside at the rate of inside the test you need to add something what you need to add you need to add the parameter what is the value of the parameter the value of the parameter is should be same as what you have given here this browser should be same as the name and what should be the value let's say chrome chrome means i'm trying to launch my chrome browser okay so this chrome will now it will only come if you give here any kind of parameters so you have to give the parameter to your method so you can write string any any variable you can give so i'm giving name of browser i'm giving name of browser now you need to write some logic like if the name of my browser equals Chrome, then just launch the Chrome browser, right? Simple logic. Now I need to also write if the name of the browser equals Firefox, then just launch the Firefox browser. If name of the browser equals Edge, then just launch the Edge browser. Simple, right? So every step looks fine to me now, right? Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to my uh, testng.xml. Now what will happen here? Let me tell you. Now these two test cases will now run parallelly on Chrome browser and on no other browser, right? This will only work in the Chrome browser, right? So this is not called as parallel testing. Parallel testing comes when the same test is available twice. Here with Chrome, here with Firefox, right? Here the name of the test is, you can give some other name, testing on Chrome. Here you can give the name of the test as testing on Mozilla. Okay. I got two tests. I can add one more test. So I can give the name of the test as testing on Edge. So the value will be Edge. I have written all the code now. So now what will happen? All the three tests. What are the tests we have? Let me show you. This is my third test, which is Edge. My second test. Firefox, my first test, Chrome. All three of them will be launching parallelly, right? One on the Chrome, one on the Mozilla, one on the Edge. All three of them will launch parallelly. 
let me show it to you. I am now doing right click and running them as a suit. Now let's see what happens. I have run all of them. You can see Chrome got launched. After running all of them, I'm seeing here that out of six test cases, three are pass and three are fail. So now I'm going to click on an emailable report. So you can click generate the emailable report by doing the refresh on the project. Once you refresh the project, you will see this folder called as test output. In test output, there is an emailable report. Once you see the emailable report, right? Uh, it can tell you that what is exactly the issue. So you can see I'm getting no such element exception for a element which is two tab search text box. Okay. So that means you need to go to your code test case too, right? So I'm getting the issue for this particular line, which is a two tab search text box. So this is giving me the trouble. I mean, I'm getting exception for this called as no such element exception. That's why my three test cases have got failed. No problem. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to rectify this. I'm going to fix this. So now I'm again going to do the right click on it. And after doing the right click, so each and every time my this particular element is not visible not visible i'm getting no such element exception okay no such element exception no such element exception wonderful i have finally understood the problem the problem is in the line number 27 right i should not launch this particular url because this particular url is taking to the login page right uh, but i i should launch only till amazon.india so i'm going to delete this url after if you delete this url then what will happen in your test case one uh you don't you, you don't get this login page directly right i mean after getting this page you need to click on this account and list then only you can do the login so you need to make little bit of changes in your test case one is that after coming to after launching your uh, this particular website called amazon.india you need to click on account and list so let's inspect it once so once after inspecting it you can see it is also made with id this is the id and uh, does it has name in it let's search does it have name uh looks like no okay so now since i have the id i'm going to click on accounts and list using id itself so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to my test case one i'm going to just repeat this step here and i'm just going to replace my id with the new id which i have and what action you want to perform on this so what is the component name called as accounts and list okay so i'm going to mark it as account and list and then the action that you want to perform on this account and list is dot click see guys uh, when you do automation testing right you do mistake right but don't take it as a uh, negativity you have to take it as a challenge i am very happy that i did a mistake Whatever the mistake I have done today, I'm pretty sure as a student, you will not do that mistake, right? So I'm very happy that I got a chance to even teach you this concept now. So this is now ready. I saw one more mistake that I have done is that if the name of the browser equals Chrome, then launch the Chrome browser. But if the name of the browser equals Firefox, then why launching Chrome browser? You have to now launch the Firefox browser, okay? So this was again my mistake, which I have corrected it. Third mistake, which I did, if the name of the browser equals Edge, then I don't want to launch the Chrome browser, but I want to launch the Edge browser. So these were the four mistakes that I had done. I have corrected it. Now, finally, what I'm going to do, I'm going to my uh, testng.xml. I, I will make sure that all the browsers which are open are now closed, otherwise, it will be difficult for us to understand which is running, which is not running. So I'm going to close each one of them. Let me delete each one of them so that there is no doubt and question. So I'm closing. I'm closing all my browsers. Even this browser I'm closing. 
even my Slack, I'm closing. I have closed my everything now. Now again, I'm going to do the right click on my XML file and I'm going to run them as a suit. Now let's see what happens. Now all three browsers should come together. So you can see Chrome has come. Within few seconds, Mozilla should come and Edge should also come. But you can see it is not coming, right? Edge has not come yet. Firefox has not come yet. Wonderful. That means again, there is some problem. We'll try to fix it. We'll see. Let it run completely. So, okay, wonderful. So see, Chrome activity is done. Now activity is happening on Mozilla. In Mozilla also, test case one is executing and test case two is executing. Let it run. Then I will tell you what is happening. So in Mozilla also, test case one is done. Now test case two is getting started. Once this test case is done in Chrome, again, this test case two will be done in Mozilla. Again, these two test cases will be done in Edge. So now you can see Edge browser has also launched, right? This kind of testing is called as cross browser testing. Okay. Running the same set of test cases in multiple, multiple browsers. So this is called as cross browser testing, running the same set of test cases in different, different browsers. Okay. So this is called as cross browser testing. Wonderful. I have even explained you as a part of this video, what is called as cross browser testing, right? So you can see here. First, I executed everything in Chrome, then I executed everything in Mozilla, then I executed everything in Edge also. Let me generate the report once, you will get an idea. So as of now, you can see all the test cases are passed. I can go to my test output folder and I can do emailable report. So you can see the report. Guys, this is called as cross browser testing, not parallel. Parallel I will show you now. I'm going step by step so that you will understand better, right? So you can see. First, testing is happening on Chrome, then testing is happening on Mozilla, then testing is happening on Edge. On Chrome also, I have two test cases. On Mozilla also, I have two. On Edge also, I have two. Executing one by one, the same test cases on different, different browsers is called as the cross-browser testing. What changes shall I do here to make it parallel so that all the three browsers will be uh, uh, launching parallelly, right? So for that, at a suit level, you need to introduce something. And you need to introduce something called as something called as parallel. So you need to go to at the suit level and write parallel. What do you want parallel? Do you want parallel as classes or you want parallel as test? So test I need, right? So as you know, I have total of three tests here, one test and then the second test and then the third test. As you know, I have three tests with me. One for Chrome, one for Firefox, and one for Edge, right? So I have total of three tests as of now. I want to make sure that for these three tests, I'm doing parallel testing for tests, right? So now this is a perfect code written by me now to do the parallel testing for the two test cases. Now what will happen? The same set of test cases will now execute in Chrome, Mozilla, and Edge parallelly, right? So now all the browsers which are open, I will close it to avoid any kind of questions and doubts. And now I'm going to do the right click here and run as the test ng suit. So now at the bottom of my laptop, you can see the three browsers coming together. As of now, you can, you can see Chrome has come, Mozilla has come, Edge has come. All three have come. And now parallel execution is happening. The same set of test cases is now executing in Chrome also, Mozilla also, and Edge also, right? So this will save time. In the previous testing which we were doing, that was called as the cross-browser testing. First, the testing is getting finished in Chrome. Then it is again starting in Edge. When it is getting over, it is again starting in Mozilla. So it is a wastage of time. But here you have, you have got the same thing with less time right obviously your memory utilization of a laptop will be higher here because all the three browsers are doing parallel parallel testing you can see this one i have got it in a very small duration of time so now what i can do i can again go to your emailable report and you can see now this is called as a parallel testing right look at the beautiful report that i have here right i have the past as 222 skip as 000 retried as 000 failed as 000 right total time consumption as uh, some particular time right and uh, with no exception right 
this is how we do the parallel testing. In order to do the parallel testing, first of all, you need to know the various annotations that we have in the test ng. And obviously, patience is the key role that plays here, right? You need a lot of patience to do the parallel testing because this program really takes a lot of time to write. I did some mistake in this program, tried to correct it within next moment is because so that you will also understand, right? I hope this video was helpful. In case yes, give a big thumbs up to this video. If you want me to upload all the videos on the test ng, then please make sure you are sharing this video with your friends. Thank you.